Hi guys, how you doing? It's Dom here from Wobbling About and Rocking Out. I had a wonderful chat uh, with my good friend Kev Curran from uh, Inspired Youth. Uh, caught up after many, many years. I've got so much respect for the work that Kev and Inspired Youth do in York and the surrounding areas for young people. There's so much of a story behind that as well and why Kev does that. So hopefully you enjoy this interview and you get something from it and you can uh, support Inspired Youth in some way just by liking their stuff and supporting them and watching the wonderful work that uh, Kev and the Wire Inspired Youth uh, Network do because uh, it's amazing stuff. Thank you so much for watching this. Thank you so much for checking it out. I really appreciate it and I'll see you soon thank you right kev it's a pleasure to sit down with you today mate uh kev from inspired youth now we go quite far back i used to work in the same office space as you back in york uh, many many years ago always had so much respect for what you were doing supporting young people across north yorkshire and obviously that the legacy of the project has far you know far exceeded that so my, my first question to you for those that don't know anything about inspired youth they're outside of york and maybe even outside the country um you know what is it that you do on a day-to-day -day basis and, and tell me a bit about your work really well firstly thanks for the um energetic welcome and everything it's nice to see you as well and it yeah it is a long time in it i think the world was in sepia tones back then yeah um, Inspired Youth, um, we're a not-for-profit social enterprise, so we work with communities, we work with real people in communities, we work with, like, ostracised or isolated groups, you know, people whose stories need telling in order to raise awareness or tackle stereotypes or reduce stigma. We've done films on all kinds of different subjects, from, like, homelessness to dementia, you know, we work with children and young people, but we also work with adults. Um, and we use arts and media because arts and creativity is just such a powerful way of telling stories and projecting those stories and insights to the world. So that's what we do in, in a nutshell. I think it was sort of born out of the fact that my own life as a child growing up, I, I had quite a lot of trauma and I, you know, I struggled with life. I struggled with engaging I, I, and I, I felt like, yeah, I felt like nobody really understood. And I think when I grew up, I just felt like I want to be there for the kids like me. I want to create opportunities so that them children feel seen, you know, because going through trauma makes a massive impact on your life. So that's where the sort of dream came about, you know, telling stories. I think it was I think it was Ken Lurch's Cares that I watched that just inspired me. And I just thought, wow, it represents, you know, you don't see that in the movies, you know, this working class community, this gritty northern area you know this this tough social sort of issues going on and I thought yeah that's that's amazing how that story then touches your heart and then makes a difference and makes other people feel seen and I think that's where the buzz comes from so day to day it ranges I, I do films so we, we produce quite a lot of films telling people stories stories about organizations but we also do like journey based stuff so we're doing some work at the moment with young people that are leading the conversation looking at systems change, looking at the education system and how they would reform it or looking at mental health services and what's that like as a young person and exploring systems like social media where there's obviously lots of problems in society with that and there's a knock-on effect on young people's confidence, you know, self-body image, you know, exposure to X, Y and Z. So it's just broad ranging and just I get to meet loads of people. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working with... Um, a guy called Chris from Selby AVS at the moment, and he's just like bounding with energy and got these big dreams and ideas. And, you know, I get to meet him and then I get to meet all of the people he's helping at his food bank or at his Zumba class or, you know, at his wellbeing thing. It's just, it's just, I get to meet lots of people and I get to be enriched and grow as a person myself through that experience as well. Yeah, yeah, it's it's amazing, man. And, and I think, obviously, it'd be interesting to talk about how Inspired Youth has changed, obviously. So I remember, we, you know, we were in an office at YSJ, the Phoenix Centre, and you were doing stuff, again, around North Yorkshire back then. How How has the mission statement with Inspired Youth changed, if at all? Or is it still the same as it was back then? How would you say that the, the project has, has changed and developed over time? Well, I think you learn and change and develop and adapt as you, as you go, you know, as you're learning, as you know, if you're going into something new and fresh, you know, you're sort of an amateur at it, but, you know, you learn those skills, you learn what works. I'd, I'd say fundamentally it's the same principle. It's about raising people's aspirations, 
It's about creating a platform so people's voices are heard. Untold stories are seen and amplified. And, you know, that gives the people we work with a sense of, they go on a journey, they meet different professionals, they find out about photography, they meet a graffiti artist or an artist, you know, they work with a photographer and a, you know, lyricist like Liam or a drama, a drama company, you know, and and it and it takes their real stories and turns it into something really powerful, just like you get in the movies. So, mm-hmm. like, in a way, it's, it's the same thing. We do some things a little bit differently. We've adapted and changed in that. We work probably in bigger partnerships now and part of bigger things rather than really small local things. So we've grown as a, you know, reputation and as a, as, as someone that delivers high quality stuff. And we, we always culminate where possible our projects in let's have a showcase, let's have an event, let's bring people together, let's show people what we've done, let's applaud these young people or these adults, let's, you know, shine a light on it, let's have a debate about it, let's not just say, oh, we've done a film, that's it, what happens next, what's the conversation, how can that inform policy, how can it change society, what systems can it change, all of that stuff, it's all good stuff, isn't it? and like, it's a privilege, really, I find it a privilege to do it. Yeah, it's amazing. That's what I always loved about you, man. And, uh, you know, just, just the history of Inspired You is that enthusiasm, that unwavering enthusiasm in the face of, of adversity and also seeing other people's adversity. You know, you, you, you've you been through a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. And, and I wonder, you know, I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this one, but do you still love it? Do you still have the same passion? I am so, I'm mean? shaking my head and saying yes, so that I don't know what psychologically that means, but I am so passionate about it. And, like, sometimes... Sometimes it is a you know it it, it, it is a job sometimes yeah. you know, yeah, like yeah. and people say do what you love because then it comes easy like you, you you're enjoying it but there's a lot of hard work behind it you know if you've got a small team or you're working on your own it can be quite a lot of pressure mm-hmm. to bring these big things to life but I've got as much passion now as we had back then like I am just full of passion I am that is me I'm I've got this fire to see stuff happen and you know like I always tell the story where I was doing like. I think it was Mediale in York, and we were working with some um, children that were leaving the care system. It was called the 1%. And we were looking at the venues and stuff like that. And we went into the Everyman and we're like looking at these smaller screens. And like people were like, well, maybe we should go for this small screen because then, you know, we'll get a full house. We won't need to worry about it being empty and we're safe. And I, I was like, mm, let's have a look at screen one. And like, imagine me going into screen one, like my vision of my, and I was looking at it, seeing it happen, like imagining the future of them children standing at the front. And I was like, no, you've shown me this one now. So we're going to have to go for, for one. And it's like, it's a bigger challenge. You might have an empty thing. But in the end, it was a full house. It was electric. It was electric atmosphere. It's having the aspiration to, to go higher, to go bigger, to go, you know, better to do it as best you possibly can. And I suppose, that's the thing that I've still got is like, how can I not just do the same things in a different way, but how can I do it better? How yeah. can I make more of an impact? How can I reach a further audience? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's my, my, my question coming off the back of that is for any for anybody that sees what you've done, remember, you know, I know you came from very little and you didn't have, and I, obviously I want to respect that the, you know, you mentioned that trauma there that you came through and you're here now and you've achieving and you're still achieving your dreams and you've helped other people do the same. I wonder what would be your tips and advice for any young person or anybody even, because you mentioned working with adults who's listening to this, watching this and is inspired by what you've done how how does that happen someone comes from nothing someone comes from that trauma and turns it into something that is not only locally regionally recognized but also nationally for its work it's a I get a lot of hard work must be involved in that but what would be your tips to anybody who's looking at you and going oh man I, I don't know if I can do what Kev's done you know what I mean belief it's so massive like if you can believe in something if you can really believe in something if you really believe you can get to the top of that mountain if you really believe that you can do that marathon if you really believe you can set up that business if you really believe in your heart like for me it was out of passion it wasn't like oh i can get a career out of this or i can you know this will get me this place in life it's like there's a raw passion in me for you know a compassion for people as well in the community that are going through other types of trauma like that's the other thing that I'd say as well is that I think people like to tell the story like it's rags to riches, like it's broken mm-hmm. to mended. Mm-hmm. And and I like to think of it like, is it is it the the pottery with the gold? Like I, I think that all of us have got cracks, yeah. Um, 
but like it's that's the goal what people do to overcome that adversity to get through that pain to 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 keep going even though life's against them and all the odds are against you and i'd say that like you know i lost a brother to suicide as a child that's the trauma that i was referring to and that still affects my mental health like i'm not a healed altogether person you know i'm overcoming anxiety i'm fighting against back against the anxiety i'm dealing with you know moments of depression in my life and you know um tackling that those really dark moments is difficult so i, I want people to know that not everything is always as it seems it doesn't it doesn't all just happen and it's all glorious wonderful you know there's just a real person in me behind it all but yeah i feel like that's a good message because I'm saying I'm I'm imperfect. I still have my challenges, but don't let that stop you. Don't let that stop you standing on that stage and say, saying your story. Don't let that anxiety stop you from going in that room and running that workshop. Don't mm. let that fear stop you from believing you can run an amazing event or create an amazing song or produce an amazing film. I think when something comes from the heart, it resonates. It always yeah. resonates. The songs that hit you the hardest are the ones that you resonate with, you know? Yeah. Just, I was going through grief just before the pandemic. My mum died and uh, there was a song called Glitter by a guy called Patrick Drowney or Downey. And it's just like, it just like, it's like this big mess, but it's like connected to depth. You know, like how they say grief is like the depth of your grief is the measure of your love. And yeah. so in a way, I think a lot of life is about mindset and perspective and life can get you down and it can get difficult. And sometimes... Well, during the pandemic, I was really not well. So, like, I found it hard to go out, found it hard to leave my, my door. Like, I was jumping when the postman came and put the letters through. I was, like, really, my nervous system was, like, shutting down. I was walking down the street, and if there was a person coming towards me, you know, 50 metres away, I'd hold my breath. Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it really got in my head, and it, it's taken me a long time to start to get back out and to get back involved in things and stuff like that. So... I'm, essentially what I'm saying is I'm a human being. It's not this rags to riches thing. It's an up and down, ongoing, keep going, don't quit sort yeah. of thing. Um, so, yeah, I feel like my advice would be don't quit, even when you feel like quitting, keep going and believe in yourself, believe in your dream, believe in your, you know, in your vision. In what yeah. you, I think there's an innate passion. You know, you didn't get into music journalism and doing these kind of things because it didn't have anything to do with you. It's because it was within you that you were like, yeah, that sounds really cool. Meeting people, going places, you know, in, in interviewing different people from different backgrounds and telling their stories. So it's like, it's an innate thing, I think, that's just natural in me. I want to tell stories. I want to meet people. I want to find out what they've been through. I want to find out what they've learned. I want to share that with the world, you know. I love, I love that, man. Yeah. I, I've always loved that. Again, so much respect, you know, on record. Uh, just wanted to say that, like, you know, even from afar, even watching you on social media over the last few years, I really admire what you've done. Uh, and one of the questions I want to ask, we've talked about how the business has changed, but how have you changed from those first days, you know, in, as, as part of Inspired Youth, you know, different offices, different spaces, different meetings you've been through, you know, how have you changed, developed? What have you noticed about yourself? and how you've developed as a person through the work you've done. Yeah, well, I, th I think that the, 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 the obvious change is the hair colour. Uh, <laughs> um, and ageing is like, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a real wake-up call. But um, how have I changed? I think I've become a bit more wise, a bit more... Cause, because we, with, with passion comes this sort of bubbling, like, fire. And sometimes, you know... Like as a younger person, I think that can that can bubble over and it can be understood or perceived or it can affect other people as well. And not being aware of that, you know, like I, I realized over the time I started to, you know, when they talk about mindfulness, mm. like don't just be in nature, be really mindful, like realize about the rustling leaves and realize about the clouds and the birds and the nature, like really be in it. I think sometimes we're not in it, like we're we're in our mind and we're doing what we're doing, but we're not really mindful of everything. Um, and it was only like, I'll tell you this funny story because it was like Liam, Liam had said, I used to work with Liam Critical Powers. We yeah. did a bit of work at Inspired Youth. And one point he said to me, um, it's really frustrating when you interrupt, you know, when you're halfway through a sentence and someone jumps in and cuts yeah. over you. And I was like, from my perspective, I didn't really see what he was talking about because to me, to me, I was like, I've got this inspiring thing to say right at that moment. If I don't say it, I'm going to lose it and it's not going to be the right time anymore. And I'll say it. And then, but, 
but that's because I wasn't mindful of it. But then, then when when Zoom came about and everyone was on Zoom, I, I suddenly became massively aware of this fact that when you because when you jump in on Zoom, it's like and, and everyone, no one knows when to speak, and you, you, it's really obvious when you do it. So it's like right, press the mute, 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 so I can't do it. But yeah, I just think then being mindful of that means that you can be aware. Because you're not doing it intentionally, but it does also have an impact on other people and how that, that makes them feel or how important they think what they're saying is. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I think that's the main thing that I've grown in is I'm more mindful about my strengths, my weaknesses, of how I am, of how my actions affect other people. Um, and just always trying to learn and grow as a person because you never, you know, you, you never can stop learning really. And yeah. you know, you get complacent, you're just stand still. And I yeah. think there's always room for growth. So I think I'm a calmer person. Um, I deal with conflict a little bit better. Um, but I'm still just a sensitive soul and a passionate person. And, you know, I, I'm learning about that and learning about the fact that, you know, everyone's different and um, I see the world through my mind and somebody else sees it through their mind. And it's being open-minded enough to, like, hear hear that out and learn from other people, really. Yeah, man, absolutely. It's something I went through as well. Like I got a ADHD diagnosis over the pandemic and I'd done the same thing as you. And you sort of, you know, in terms of like interrupting people and stuff, and I still catch myself doing it now, you know, and you know, you've got, it's just being mindful, isn't it? And also understanding, you know, being a bit kinder to yourself in that situation, you know, just going, okay, well, I've, I've, I've figured that out. I learned myself. I've learned that I do that. So now you can make that change, you know? I think that's another thing you say you got a diagnosis and mm. uh, you know, I got, I got, a diagnosis of PTSD and yeah. um I think it helps a lot because it sort of normalizes why you're a bit different mm -hmm. and like I think that's okay you know post-traumatic stress it's like that stressful thing that you never processed properly as a child that you never got the proper help for mm -hmm. has manifested it in some ways in your adult life to recognize that to be told that's just part of your bodies your minds your emotions your you know your, your human being responding to this in a way that, that you know, that you can as an adult to keep yourself safe, to protect yourself. So I think, you know, that that does help a lot to have, you know, a clear diagnosis. Oh, yeah, I've, that that makes sense now. And these are why I do them things. But then you can obviously be more mindful because then you're more aware of your own behaviours. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's um it's an ongoing thing, isn't it? Like we all have our own issues and i think a lot more people have mental health issues than we realize you know mm. um, and it's the stigma isn't it like i've always been outspoken about it maybe it's easier for me because you know i work for my own organization i'm not working for somebody that can sack me because they don't because they've got stigma against me for having mental yeah. health but a lot of other people have that so a lot of other people feel quiet and silent that's yeah. another great that is one of my proudest pieces of work so far actually is I did a piece of work with York Ending the Stigma I don't know if you know those guys but they're all lived experience volunteers that share their experiences of services and their own mental health conditions to like raise awareness and tackle stigma reduce stigma and it's amazing and they wanted to make a film about suicide prevention and of course you're like okay suicide prevention like it's heavy for me because it's trigger for me but at the same time it's like the most important issue for me is to, to save people from suicide like what can we do to do that and so we made this film and it was it's amazing really because the feedback they've been doing some screenings and doing some research on it and feedback is it's like amazingly positive it's like it, it's not depressing you like you think in your head oh that's really depressing so, but actually it's just humans saying i struggled in this way this was my story you know i was overwhelmed at work or you know i, I was going through this and it in a way you just like it it relieves you because you just think, wow, we're just human beings really, aren't we? And if we feel not judged and we feel able to say who we really are around people that are trusting people that can be kind and compassionate, it's actually a really good feeling rather than trying to have to live behind this pretense of, I'm okay, Jack. You know, it's like, yeah. what? Why? Yeah.
Yeah, absolutely. That realism there. And that was one of my next questions, actually. It moves me nicely on because, you know, I, I, I always admired how you would be able to enter a room with, you know, a lot of these decision makers and they'd be wearing their suits and they'd be, you know, they'd be they'd be sort of spouting whatever. And that's, you know, that's their thing. That's fine. But you would go in and people would gravitate towards you and they would gravitate towards that life experience. So what I what I want to ask from that is, you know, is that challenging going into a room with these policies? policy makers and these decision makers trying to make change but you know perhaps you know i guess the challenge of not being heard by those people because you've had to work tooth and nail i've seen it on social media i've seen it in person to get to get not only your voice heard but young people's voices heard in a room full of people that a lot of times not always don't have the same lived experience that you do they haven't been through it if you know what i mean well, it's really challenging because then they're the people in the positions of power. And I think what you do feel is you feel like, oh, here's me and my trainers from the council state rubbing shoulders with these, like some of the places I've been in, I'm like, how did I get here? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, picture the scene. I'm in Westminster with some care leavers. They're, they're, they're speaking on stage. You've got like, you know, the, the minister or the, you, you know, the, the guy that's like head of children and families in England. And we're in this room and I'm I'm sat there and I'm thinking, you know, sometimes I do put a suit on just to blend in, you know, but, you know, it's like, it's amazing to be in them places with real stories because those people, as much as they're powerful and they've got, you know, an understanding of strategy and all of these things and they've got the influence uh, to change things, I think it's the human story that connects with those people because they're not, they're so high up, they're not on the, ground level they're not on the front line they're not meeting with the families they're not hearing the stories i think you can you can make a a, a good sort of comparison with that with politics you know the current state of politics and and the country and all the cost of living and it's like you know on one hand you've got a politician that's you know scandaling loads of millions of pounds of tax and then on the other hand you've got these nurses and teachers going to food banks that they're like backbone of our society that, do such an amazing important job and they're sort of demonized you know oh, you know I, i've seen on news today you know um you know is it fair of teachers to do this to children and i just thought they're human beings right that go to, to work every day to make a difference to young people's lives they know on the front line i'd heard a story about a, a dinner lady that was just heartbroken because there was no more free food you know there was no more extra food for the for the poor kids and they were all hungry and that just it makes me sad but what i want to say about that is i, I heard a story recently where um an organization had given a group of young people some money and they said what do you want to do for good for social change and they said we want a young people food bank so they gave them some money and they set up this food bank and they got some sponsors and they ended up having this like food dispensary and youth clubs and schools that young people could discreetly go and access as a child and i was just like Wow, isn't the world like amazing when a young person like can like have that opportunity to say, yeah, that's a really negative thing going on in a world where children are poor and they haven't got enough food. What can we do to make a difference? That's the kind of world that I think that we can create when we work together. And that's sort of what our projects do. They give them young people or adults confidence. Oh, my story matters. You know, someone wants to listen to me, you know. I want to make a difference. You know, if you think about all of the people that make charities, like, you know, somebody loses a, a family member to, to, to cancer and suddenly they start a cancer charity and they're running marathons and they're saying, raise money, raise money, and they, they turn the pain into power. Mm. And, and that's what I always try to do. It's turn, turning pain into power and, and and you know, reframing it and re, redirecting that energy into a positive outcome. Yeah, yeah. It, I don't even know if I answered your question there. I it, think did, it, 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 it did answer my question. And that, again, you know, in terms of my next question, which was, you know, for anybody who, again, is watching and listening to this, who, who you know, takes into account what you've just said, for example, maybe they want to set something up. Maybe they want to set up something like Inspired Youth or a charity or something like that. What key skills do you need to to do something to to 
to uh, not recreate the formula because you're never going to recreate inspired youth. You're never going to recreate a character like yourself. But in terms of, you know, the key skills, what would you want to see from someone who came to you and said, Kev, I want to make a difference in my community. I want to inspire some young people. What would you want to see? And most important, well, you know, it's still important. What would you not want to see? What kind of things would you not want to see from somebody who, who again, perhaps went in there with the best intentions to do something, to do something good for the community? Well, I think what you do need is tenacity. Like you need to just believe in the cause needs a response enough to to do something about it. So I'd say go for it. Like go for it with all your heart. Like what's the worst that can happen? It doesn't for, doesn't come to fruition. It doesn't quite work out. Like it is hard. Anyone who works to build something knows how hard it is to build something up. I mean, it's still hard now on social media how competitive it is. You know, to to get a reach. Um, so in you know in some ways the petition thing that I was talking about that that we that I've been doing um, that's incredible because it's about reach because people do care but you can't reach them and as in terms of what I don't want to see is sort of lip service people who sort of like make promises they don't keep or they're not really about it like I feel like I feel like what you should what you should be is passionate about your cause and if you really believe in that cause and you really believe. In making a difference i think you should just go for it i just think you should just go for it because I, I, I think there's a passion why is that passion there why is that desire there you know and how will you feel if you just suppress that passion and that thing it's, it's never going to happen for me i'm not and i think that's the other thing words are really powerful mm-hmm. like you ever heard you have felt yourself i remember being a child and i, I was go back to the kez thing i was seeing kez amazing i mean i want to be a filmmaker i can remember lying there in my bed thinking about this and going mm-hmm. I only come from a little council state. You know, I live in poverty. You know, I'm not the best at school. I'm never going to be a filmmaker. And you sort of tell yourself these things. You tell yourself these things. And, like, it's switching that round. It's like, what if, actually? Instead of probably weren't, like, what if in your mind you go, what if, like, I can, I will, I am going to. You know what I mean? Like it, it switches it up. Like it, I, I've learned and I've seen it and I've evidenced it to myself. Having a vision and then seeing it. When I walked into screen one, I could see the people in the seats. I could see what it looked like. I could I could feel the impact of what it was going to be. Six weeks later, I was there and it was real. So I know it works. I know it works. And, you know, it does require partnership. It requires getting involved with people that can help you. There's lots of organisations and charities out there that can offer advice and guidance and support. Go and see them. Go and see your local CVS. Go and root out, do some Google searching about, you know, support that's out there to develop your idea or to get, you know, the, you know, the governance set up or the legal aspects of it. But it's relatively easy to set up a CIC. You know, you've done step one. You know, then what are you called? What is your cause? What are your principles? What are your values? Right. What can you offer? What can you deliver? Who can you partner with? Who can benefit from it? Mm-hmm. You know, and you're on you're on the way. Like back in the day when me and CJ started this, it was like, right, um, let's just have a go. And we did our first project and it won a national award. So we were like, bang, straight in there and people knew about us. And it was a different way of working. And it was like, all oh, right, you know, media, kids don't really like, like the ones that were struggling with school. It's like get kids to do maths maths and english it's like you know it's like pulling teeth out that the, <laughs> it's engaged you know they're the finding it hard we were like let's make a film right so the creative writing it was literacy isn't it you know let's do some creative writing let's tell a story you know oh let, we're doing a film about bullying let's find out from the public how many people have had an experience of bubli- uh, bullying go out there some questionnaires mathematics clear all of the do you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. how can you change the, you know, the way of learning that still achieves the same learning, but actually is really fun and it's got like a social cause and it, and it's something that affects a young person, and especially if it's something they've got experience of, you know. You know, if you want to know about county lines or being a young person in county lines, the best people to find that out, that information out about it's teenagers that have been in it or, or trapped in it or that have yeah. been in it and got out. It's the experience. It's the experience is the power for ultimate change, for social change. So 
Yeah, man, that's it. That's it. And, and sort of changing, you know, again, changing those experiences, you know, kind of, uh, you know, giving people a voice, you know, local, locally, nationally, you know, is what Inspired Youth has been doing, what you've been doing for many years, which I, I think is, again, you know, I get so much inspiration from talking to you, man. And, and, and I, yeah, you know, man. it reminds me why, you know, I got to gotta have you in my life more, man. <laughs> you, you're, you're a great, you're a great motivation. And I mean that with, with all sincerity, people can, you know, when people can do the, Oh, you're such a motivation, lip service thing, but <laughs> man, like you know, I mean, you know, you've you've seen it. I mean, you know, you've you've taught me a lot over the years in terms of, you know, business management, in terms of staying motivated. So, you know, I do appreciate that. Uh, as we kind of uh, do the the plugging bit of the interview now, where we promote uh, what Inspired Youth is doing. Um, if somebody wants to get involved with you, somebody wants to uh, support you in any way, what what would be the first steps? You mentioned again, people getting in touch. You know, what what what, what what can people do? How can people get involved and support what you're doing with Inspired Youth? Well, the, the minimum that anybody could do is just follow our social media pages and, you know, interact with it and share it because it gives us a, a bigger reach with our messages because sometimes that's the biggest shame is that you've got this really powerful story from a group of care leavers or children that are caring for their families or people living with dementia and then you can only reach a thousand people. So following and supporting what we're doing, interacting, engaging with it, makes these algorithms realise that actually people want to see this content. So that reach thing is really important, but there's lots of other ways that you can support us. You know, you could potentially volunteer, you could potentially be a partner who's got an idea, you know, we could do like joint bids together if you've got like a social, you know, idea that you want to make a difference in the community, you know, we're all for having conversations and like collaboration because we believe working together, you achieve more. So you bring different partners and different people with different skill sets that you don't necessarily have and together you're stronger. So, you know, any support would be great. But um, check out our website, it's inspiredyouth.org and we're on, we're on social medias. Yeah. Follow, give our pages a like and give a share to one of our posts. That'd be massively helpful. I'd be massively grateful for that because it's one of the things that I've really struggled with reach, you know, to get an organic reach in a community. But again, that that requires, you know, constantly going at it. And if you're one person and you've got films to edit and, you know, projects to meet and, like, deadlines to, to hit and printers to sort out, and you know what I mean? It's like it can be quite quite difficult, but um, people power. You know when I set up Declan's Law Petition, yeah, people power, like, I've been grinding that for years. People don't care. And then something came upon me and I was like, I actually think if enough people that care about this issue saw this, they would do it in a blink of an eye. They wouldn't bat an eyelid, they would just support it. And I, I was just like, but I can't reach them. And this time, people power came through, like Scooby-Doo, like massive. It was just like, I, I, you know, people were contacting me. They were watching it with me. We were watching this counter go up on the website. And other people were tuning in, you know, they got on board. And, like, I love that because it's, like, at the end, when it got over the mark, everybody was celebrating, like, they'd achieved it too, you know. It was, like, this community thing. And I thought, wow, that's really shown me something about... That's completely organic, unsponsored. There's no, you know what I mean? There's no marketing to it. It's just one person with a few words, a story, a picture, and a link and all them people came through. So it just shows you what's possible when people come together. And I think I'd love to do not just that's a personal project about my brother and trying to change the law, but I like that idea of communities in force coming together, you know, like what you can achieve and how much change you can make and how you can force the system to give you an answer. You know, I'm going to get an answer now. They've got to give me a response. And they're, they're thinking really carefully about what to say, so... We'll have to see what happens next. But I don't think the journey's over. I think it's an ongoing thing. But I've got an army of people supporting me now, and that's that's amazing. Yeah, man, and and you deserve it as well. Like it, honestly, I'm so I'm so pleased for you. I'm so proud that you carried it on. Again, it's a it's a it's a motivational thing for a lot of people to to be able to carry on, to be able to keep going, and that's. You know that that is wonderful, and 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 thank you for sharing part of your story with me today. You're welcome, man. Uh, before we finish off, uh, this is where we test whether I've done my job properly. Is there anything you think I've missed today? Is there anything you want to plug and promote? Any projects that you've got going on that you want to share uh, and, and promote? Really? Yeah, well, we're doing this together with young people, journey-based, youth-led 
program, which is about systems change, and that's going to culminate um, in a showcase on the 27th of March. So just get people to look out for that. But follow, yeah, follow me on Twitter. Like I've got loads of different projects that I'm sort of involved in. I'm working with a foster and uh, you know adoption agency to try to promote their story and talk about how they make a difference and how that passes on through generations. You know, I'm working with. Uh, last year I worked with Poverty to Solutions. It was about campaigners saying poverty enough is enough. Like I just love working with that kind of organization or that kind of group to 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 yeah to magnify and amplify their messages. You know, it's like plugging in the microphone and your voice suddenly becomes louder. It's that's all it really is for me. And I get joy out of sharing their stories and watching other people grow. So when I see a young person on the stage and everyone's applauding them. And this is a kid that struggled at school and he's only really known what he's doing wrong. Yeah. And then he stood there and he's, you know, his teachers are clapping him. His parents are proud of him. You know, it's like, that's, that's the essence of it for me. You know, that's what it's all about. That's so it, That's it. That's cool, man. Everything that you just said, I think is embodied in what Inspired Youth has done. I think everybody sees that and everybody sees the legacy uh, that, it, that, it, that it has left. I mean, that is a, you know, question to squeeze in really before we, before we finish up. What, what, what's your relationship with that word legacy? What, what legacy would you like to leave from a, from a business standpoint, from a project standpoint with, with Inspired Youth, but also yourself as a person? Do you think much about the legacy of what you've done? Well, I said, well, I was saying to someone recently that I was doing a bid and that part of the process was look at what you've done and provide evidence of what you're doing. And I was sort of like, oh, yeah, wow, I've done all of that stuff. And you're like mega proud. And that that is a legacy because you have started that from scratch and you have done it for since 2007. We established it. So it's like, you know, that is a decade and a half of, of impact thousands of people in different ways, shapes and forms, audience, participants, you know, consultations, artwork, you know, exhibitions, screenings, you know, speakers, all that stuff. But for me, and like I was I was saying this to someone about the petition, because so many people reached out and were like, well done, you've done it, you've done it, you've done it. And I said, no, we did it. I can't do it without you. You were the power behind it. You did it. And it's the same for the children, young people and adults that we work with, they're the legacy, that them standing up and stepping up to that opportunity. You know, um, recently I, I was listening to a podcast with um, a young person that was on my, one of my projects and now she's running her own events and she's the one creating the event and run, running it and it's all about, you know, care leavers and care experience and that kind of thing. And you're like, that's the legacy. The legacy is that some of these young people do aspire to more and it makes them believe in what's possible. And it makes them realize they can make visions real. They can achieve their dreams. They can make it a reality. And that's the legacy. It's, it's everybody's legacy. It's not mine as a person. It's not an egotistical thing. It's like, nah, all them things were lived experience. That's what made it powerful. You know, yeah. you know the, the, the suicide prevention film is powerful. Yeah, I'm a good filmmaker. And yeah, I put a lot of heart into making it a beautiful thing. But... The real beauty in it is the authentic vulnerability of a human being saying, this is my experience and I'm sharing it so others can learn and I'm sharing it so we can make society a more empathic, considerate, kind, friendly place. So yeah, that's the legacy. Yeah, yeah. And it, and it goes, you know, like I say, you know, it's local, it's regional, but I think there is a global impact to what you've done. People people do know about it from across the world. And, and it's a pleasure to to kind of, uh, again, talk 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 it through with you today. I, I feel every time, I remember this because it was so <laughs> back in the day, every time we did something together, every time we did an event or every time I was around you, I left, you know, feeling motivated because you, you know, it was like, man you know I, I can do something too do you know what I mean because there was a lot of times where I felt like I couldn't do something or that I wasn't you know that I wasn't the right person to do whatever thing and then you came along and you just came, went for it and you changed people's perspectives 
and, and viewpoints on things and also helps other people do the same. So a lot of the work I do now, indirectly or otherwise, is probably tied, uh, well, definitely tied to, to what I saw you do, you know, 10, 10 years ago now. Do you know what I mean? Uh, so, so you know, I, I really just want to say on record, you know, I appreciate your impact on me and, and you know, and, and what we've been able to do because of what you taught me and those lessons you and CJ as well uh, taught me back in the day. But um, b- before we finish up, um, is there anything in terms... Terms of this is a bit of a, a bit of a weird question I like to add at the end. What is what is one piece of advice? What is something that you carry with you every day, uh, whether it's a sentence that you've heard in a podcast or a member of, of your friend? Well, a, fr- a friend has said to you something that's you that's been said to you in your life that you carry with you every single day and gives you that drive. Can you share that with me? I just think it all comes back to passion for me. It's like why does that passion exist within you? Like live that passion out, follow that up, you know, react to it. I don't know if I've got a quote, so to speak, or a, you know, a phrase, so yeah. so to speak, but I just believe like, it don't really matter what it is that you do or how big or small or medium size the impact is. It could be a little patch of land that you've renovated and brought back to life and planted some flowers or planted some fruit or vegetables. Do you know what I mean? Like it could be that that's you've changed the world in some way and that benefits, you know, the world in some small way. And I think that's the thing that I think about is that, you know, like some, Sometimes people are like, but do you really believe it makes a difference? And I always think about this story where it was like loads of crabs stranded on a beach and this yeah. guy's picking up chicken. I mean, you heard that story. Uh, and he's yeah. like, it's someone comes up to him and he's like, ah, oh, you're never going to get all them in there. And he picks one up and goes, it made a difference to that one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, if you make a difference to one person, it made a difference. You yeah. could have 10 participants and nine of them drop off and it, it didn't work out for them and, and their life didn't change. But that one person that sparked their belief, it all comes back to my story because when when I was broken and when I, you know, was struggling with life as a teenager, you know, I tried to take my own life when I was 17. Mm-hmm. And like I had a teacher at, at school called Alison Willis at, at, at college, York College. She's still there now, bless her, doing the same thing for other children. And she just believed in me. And she went, Kev, you can do this. And she got me back up off, off, my, off my knees, onto my feet. And I went on to go, to, I, I finished my course. I got a massive distinctions everywhere. I went to university. I got a first degree. I created a film that won an award. Like it all became out of this one person believing in me and passing that on to me. And I think that one person can start a revolution in you, just one person's encouragement. So I just think we should be more like that as a society, point out what someone's good at, you know, encourage someone in their endeavor. Like, give them motivation, lift them up, offer some support, get involved. You know, like, I just think that, like, believing in yourself and other people believing in you is massive, you know? Yeah. You've got a supportive group of supporters around you saying, Dom, what you're doing is amazing. You're going to believe and believe and believe more, and you're going to, you know, you're going to get that feedback. And believe. If everyone was like, I don't think you should be doing that, it would, like, plant seeds in your mind to the opposite, yeah. So, you know, kudos to you as well, man. You know, I've been flying out to the States and doing all these gigs and, you know, winning awards, national awards and stuff. Like, it's great to see that you've accomplished all of that stuff, you know, from them humble Phoenix beginnings where we were all sort of like, what do we do? How do we run a business, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's great. It's great to see other people, like, where they've got to and catch up with them as well. So, yeah, yeah it's been, been rad, man. Yeah, it's been we'll a pleasure. We'll have to do it again. Man. We'll have to do it. We'll have to do it again. We'll have to catch up. Definitely, man. Thank you so much for making the time for me, dude. I really You're appreciate welcome, it. man. Keep in touch, Dom.